here is a quite sophisticated side, and I have no intention of going into a major detail, but it's really to say to you guys, there is a major paradigm shift taking place now. Now, the word paradigm comes from a guy called Thomas Kuhn, who wrote a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. What did he look at? He looked at the change in the, in the world models in physics, from the Newtonian world model to the quantum physics world model. Now, you've got to get to understand that that world model wasn't just based on somebody creates a hypothesis, hey, it's really logical, I go for it, I agree with it. These guys were at war with each other. I mean, it was emotional. And I'll tell you, that movement from the Newtonian world model to the quantum world model to the micro world model involved some tremendous obstacles to people agreeing that that was happening. And primarily, they were emotional. And primarily, they were mindset uh, models. You almost had to wait until the old dinosaurs died out for the new model to come into effect. Right? And we see that within every industry and everywhere and every organization. What we're talking about here in the traditional paradigm when we're talking about value, people, organizing technology. At every level, that is moving and changing now. You know? People were writing about the change in the financial, global financial crisis not just in September, but for three, four years they've been looking at scenario developments of possibilities given the cases of the way the financial models were built up and their social economic effects like that, okay? One of the sort of um, key takeaways here is to realize that as we move away from products and objects to, I don't know whether you guys can actually see that on there, but to, to, to products that are about meaning, risk-taking, services, they're future-based in their concept story. People, when we talk about you guys use people capability, here, every one of you here, what is your dream? What's your fundamental dream? And how does that lock into you as a human being, irrespective of work and private life? You know, how does the organization help you to learn and grow and make that happen as, as, as part of the process? Because technology that exists outside of your organization now, social technology, is far in advance in terms of its collaborative methodologies than it exists within your business. And as much as people try to copy the DNA of whether, you know, I, I say uh, social technology, the first thing you think is Facebook. Well, Facebook's like hold hot now, right? Okay, even the CIA's got a Facebook type thing that they're, 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 they're running on there. I'm talking about the fact that what people think is if you copy the technology and you put it in the organization, you get the same step change. Does everybody know about the saffron revolution in Burma, the saffron revolution? And if you don't know it, you should know about it. Um, saffron revolution, um, is, uh, I may upset some people by saying this, so my apologies if it does upset you, but the Burmese um, government has a few issues with the way it deals with monks and nuns there. And the monks and nuns took to the streets to help them understand it. They had a few issues. Well, the Burmese government then locked the mon monks and nuns up. And we call it saffron because that's the color of the Buddhist monks at the time. A young Canadian guy, 22 years of age, came out of um, um, uh, Burma, very upset. They were killing people, murdering people on the streets and hiding it. He set up a Facebook page and within four months, he had something, four to five months, he had like 400,000 people sign up. 25 Nobel uh, laureates, uh, Gordon Brown writing the introductory page. What's the interesting factor is that around the world, people self-organize protests in every major city. So the key to social technology is not having the technology. The key to social technology is having an emotional differentiation. Productivity technology is driven by data and numbers. You do need that. That's table stakes to get into the game. All right? Social technology is driven by emotion. And until you get that distinguishing difference, it's really hard for businesses to make that jump. And that emotion comes from what you guys just did there. You know, as we sit on the look on the